On today's Steve's Makerspace, there's a programmable car with object avoidance, a programmable hover car, and a smart forklift. Welcome to Steve's Makerspace. Hi everybody, welcome to Steve's Makerspace. I'm Steve, thanks for watching. Today we're doing a how-to on vehicle artificial intelligence. Smart cars, smart forklift, smart hovercraft, uh, programming things, scanning for objects and doing stuff when you find something. These things I'm going to present to you are, I would call them concept vehicles. They're not really finished products. They could be better, but uh, I'm just showing you some of the possibilities. Um, so let's get to it. In my last video, I showed off a programmable pattern maker where you could take a program written on a board stick it in front of a bank of scanners, and then it would produce a pattern for you. We're gonna to start today's video with the same program running, but instead of controlling a pattern, it's controlling a car. Each row on this board is a different command. The first row is turn left, the second row is turn right, the third row is move forward, the fourth row is repeat. So this pattern is simple, it's just saying turn left, move forward, turn left, move forward, turn left, move forward, and repeat. Now we'll stick it in front of the scanners, position the car, and turn on the program. I'm going to speed up the video a bit, but you can see that it turns left, it moves forward, it turns left, it moves forward, and so on. What I have here is a shift register made by Brent Batch. Uh, it's connected to a clock and it's got some other stuff added to it. The clock pushes a signal up the line at a regular interval. There's an AND gate behind the scanners. Uh, so if the signal from the shift register meets up with a positive result from one of the scanners, then that sends a signal to an OR gate right at the front of the line. So here you see the first and third OR gates are lit up. That's because the first commands in this pattern say to uh, turn left and move forward. Then these OR gates basically tell the car what to do. I've got a controller for turn left and a controller for turn right and an electric engine for move forward. I've got two sets of bearings for turn right and turn left, and that's basically it. It's pretty simple. If you want the car to do something else, you just put a different pattern in front of the scanners. For the repeat command, if that's true, then this top row is going to push the signal back to the beginning of the shift register. And if there is no repeat, then this third row of uh, gates is saying, move the signal forward. The same technique works for other vehicles. Here I've replaced the car with a hovercraft. I added an extra row of scanners to my scanner bank, so uh, now I can also go in reverse. I'm gonna speed up the video here. It would be easy to add another line of scanners and commands which could do other things like drop off a payload or transform somehow. I'm going to have this on the workshop. Uh, button one is to turn it into hover mode. Button two is to turn the program on. And the other four buttons are for manual control of the vehicle. In case it goes too far afield and you need to try to uh, drive it back, you can. Now here's the car again. Uh, this time I've added some collision avoidance to the vehicle. So if it uh, encounters something, it's going to back up and turn. It's still running the program, but uh, if it encounters something on its uh, right side, it tries to move around to the left. If it encounters something on its uh, left side, it tries to move around towards the right. So here I've got scanners on one side going to an OR gate, scanners on the other side going to an OR gate, and then if both OR gates are triggered at the same time, then that would mean there's something directly in front, and then it'll go left in that case. There's an electric engine for backing up, and then there's a controller uh, for each direction, either left or right. Now here's something I think is pretty neat. This is a smart forklift. So all I'm going to do is get in the seat and press a start button. And what it's going to do is it's going to scan and look for that blue object. And when it finds the blue object, it's going to go towards it uh, and then pick it up. It's pretty slow, so I'm gonna speed it up a bit. Here it locates the object and starts moving forward. Obviously, it's not really looking for blue, it's looking for the particular shape of this object. And I'll slow it down for this part. Ta-da! Almost. 
I'll reset it by putting it on the forklift again and we'll move things around a little bit and try again. I pressed the start button. It's lifting up, spinning, scanning for objects. It's disregarding objects that don't fit what it's looking for. It locks on to the object that it likes, starts moving forward. I'll speed up the video some. It's got another set of scanners looking to see if it's uh, something directly in front of it. And if it is, then it lifts it up. So what we have here in the front, these are DERF's uh, long range scanners at the top. And then there are regular scanners below. The scanners above the wheels aren't actually doing anything. The long range scanners, uh, you've got a T shape. That's the shape of that blue object going to the blue AND gate down there. All the other scanners are going to an OR gate to weed out anything that is more than that T-shape. So we're looking for something that is that T-shape but is not more than that T-shape. So keep that in mind, we'll come back to that in a minute. So when you first turn this on, uh, what happens is the pistons on the bottom get triggered and a controller starts spinning the entire forklift. The controller is set to five degrees continuous. So we're spinning around and scanning and finally this blue gate gets triggered. And then we have this nor nor and gate, which is a kind of latch. So when the blue gate gets triggered, the second nor gate here will be uh, changed to an on position. So when that happens, the pistons will turn off, the controller will turn off, and the electric engine will turn on. That'll stay on until the regular sensors pick up something. The two regular sensors directly in front of the forklift are connected to an or gate. That is connected to another latch. You see the nor nor and trifecta over there. So when the second nor gate gets switched to an on position, that's going to turn the engine off. It also turns on the forklift pistons and that controller, which tilts the fork about eight degrees, I believe. And that's it. That's the whole operation. I'm going to turn it on and we'll just watch the logic working. So here the pistons are triggered and we're spinning around. We'll speed through this part. Now I'll put it on slow motion. The first latch is triggered, now we're going to move forward. As we approach the object, we'll slow down again. Second latch is going to get triggered in a second. And there go the pistons. So that's some basic smart vehicle stuff. When you start layering these different techniques on top of each other, then you get really smart vehicles. One thing I thought of doing is uh, after picking up the blue object, I would do a second scan and look for that green object. That's why I had that green object there. Uh, and then I would bring the blue object to the green object and sit it down next to it. I thought that would be interesting. Something else I might do is maybe parallel parking a car, which is uh, challenging for most car drivers. Uh, we could make battle bots. You could make a maze, though I believe somebody already did that in Scrap Mechanic. I'd love to hear your ideas for smart vehicles and if you've got a smart vehicle you'd like me to build or one that you've built that you'd like me to show off, let me know. Everything will be in the workshop. You can look for links in the description. That's it for today. If you liked what you've seen, please give me a big like and consider subscribing to my channel. Check out my other videos and um, give me some comments and I'll see you next time. Bye! Steve's Makerspace.